Hello and welcome back to the Medic Wall plugin. This is Nathan Wilkerson and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, material manager and give a brief overview of that. Some of the things it can do and some of its features. So let's get started here and go right to the wall plugin which is up here and to the global settings. So first we'll click the global settings and so this is a fairly new feature that I've just added um, <clears throat> underneath the materials tab here, the third tab over you're going to see this whole custom material library that pops up now. Um, now you can see I've got it populated here with a number of items, <coughs> but uh, generally speaking when you first download the plugin you're going to notice that there's not quite as much here. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to show you some basic features of this uh, this new uh, <coughs> thing here within the plugin. Um, first of all, whenever you make changes to any of the uh, uh, materials here shown um, and then you want to exit out you do not need to hit the save settings button this save settings button really only pertains to these four items over here so if you make changes to these four items over here then you're going to want to hit save settings before you close out so everything is kind of self-contained here with the uh, custom materials in the material library <coughs> so whatever actions you do here will be recorded and saved so first things first, <coughs> you've got the material name. Uh, actually, we've got a little thumbnail. Uh, let's show you that. Now, when you mouse over this, you'll notice that you have a larger thumbnail pop-up of the material. And this is, can be particularly useful when you're talking with about textures, which are usually more detailed. And you can see that when you do a thumbnail over these, um, you get to see a little better preview of what that's going to look like. So, um, yeah, you just mouse over those, and it kind of shows you a preview. This is the material name. Um, with the material name, uh, I would try not to use too many crazy characters keep it simple um, yeah commas and, and such it gets a little crazy sometimes um, okay so now you'll no notice you've got horizontal and vertical scale this is pertains only to textures <coughs> that use an image and does not uh, pertain to materials that just are a color <coughs> and you can see here it's blanked out for these two materials and all they have is a color specified and now <coughs> for textures you do not specify color You'll notice this is blanked out. So now we get to the type. Um, basically, you've got really you've got two different types. You've got a color and you've got a texture. Um, you'll notice you have TJ and TP. TJ stands for uh, texture with a JPEG, and TP stands for texture with a uh, PNG. So <coughs> you've basically got two different uh, file or uh, image types that you can assign to these different. Uh, uh, textures and then of course C just stands for color so that's kind of my organizational method okay now we get to the status okay status what this means is basically you can deactivate or activate a texture in the material li or uh, material in, in the library uh, simply by clicking on this button and what this does is now when you go to create a wall or edit a wall and you know, if you don't want this material to pop up in the drop down menus, but you don't want to delete it, then you would deactivate it. So, this does not delete it from the material library. All it does is essentially turn it off temporarily so it doesn't show up. So, if you have a bunch that you don't want to show up, it's, keep, it's getting your menus, drop down menus too busy, then you might want to, you know, deactivate a bunch of them. <coughs> okay, so, anyway, it's just a handy little feature. Um, okay, so now we have the edit feature so you click on this to edit a material and same here you have a delete and you can delete any of these materials let's go ahead and just delete one just to show you it prompts you do you want to permanently delete it yes we do and of course it goes away um, <coughs> now when you edit a material let's go ahead and edit um, let's say this one right here okay so when you go into edit it's going to allow you to change the material name first of all it's also going to allow you to change the status now you'll notice the status here is here. You can change it here as well, but you can also change it here in the edit edit menu. Okay, so there you go. <coughs> you can change it from a texture to a color or back, vice versa. Uh, one thing to note is so now right now we have the usage. So if you want this material only to appear in the wainscoting drop-down menu, or only to appear in the sheathing drop-down menu, 
then you would do something like this and you would unclick those. So basically each one of these that you click it will show up in that drop down menu in the edit wall and draw wall function. <coughs> so it's whatever you want it to do. And then you hit update material and it jumps you out. And let's go back into that one again. I think that's what we changed. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, again, you can get in here and you can actually change the image file. Um, right now, I have it only set to JPEGs and PNGs, but uh, we may change that later down the road. And then you can set the horizontal and vertical scale. Okay. So it's pretty fairly straightforward. Um, there's really not much to the edit. So now, if we go, well, let's go ahead and edit a color uh, type material a little bit simpler as you can see um, there's an, all the texture stuff goes away if you click on this it pops up a little thing you can key in you know the uh, RGB code or you can just come here and you know play around with the colors until you get what you want <coughs> and down here you've got some gray shades you've also got the pressure treated lumber color that I use and the regular lumber color that I use uh, just kind of here for convenience and also the gypsum color that I use so there's three kind of standard Medik colors that we use and then you know everything else so let's go ahead and try that and we'll hit update material and now you can see that olive drab is no longer olive drab it's some kind of purple color so that's editing <coughs> alright let's go ahead and add a material so to add a material actually before we do that let's show what this show groups thing is all about so you can always open you know this window a little bigger if you need to and we're going to do that and you can also this corner right here see how you can drag that down further and you will want to do that if you're going to do show groups what show groups does is it gives you a quick visual of how these are organized so that means these and you can see there's duplication here so what that means is all these materials are available within the wall sheathing drop down menu all of these materials are available within the wall cladding menu all these materials are available within the external wainscoting and then <clears throat> there are um, some other um, drop down menus where I am now allowing you to use the custom materials and right now I'm not limiting uh, those so basically all of the materials that are in the uh, material library will show up in those drop down menus and we may add um, you know more uh, categories so we can make that a little more granular but at least for now um, you know, like I said you can you can hit show groups and that just kind of breaks it down for you so you don't have to sit there and ed click the edit button to check you know which materials are being used in which <coughs> uh, drop down menu then you go back to show list that just shows the actual just the list okay so let's go ahead and add a material um, click that and sure let's go G rib red. I'm going to call this G rib red. I'm going to use it just the cladding and the external wainscoting. I'm going to put in 36 inches horizontal, 24 inches this. I'm going to go ahead and choose a file. And I don't know where I put it. We'll have to find it here. Give me a second. <coughs> uh, yeah, I probably should have just put it on my desktop. So it would be easier to find, but that's fine. Uh, Let's go looking for materials. Here we go. And sure enough, it's not here. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, here we are. I'm just trying to find material. Uh, probably should have uh, put this material where I could easily grab it. Um, Anyways, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's just grab this material, for instance. <coughs> okay, so we've got a material here. It took the JPEG. Tells kind of, you know, description of what it is. Hit add material. And there you go. And then you mouse over it, and it's ready to go. Okay. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to actually delete this material. We've got too many materials going on here. I'm going to delete that one as well. I'm going to go ahead and add a color material now. So hit color. Let's just put test two. And we're going to do wall sheathing and we'll change the color to some color. Alright, fine, that'll work. And hit add material. Okay, 
So there you go. You've got materials. This material now, if you go show groups, <coughs> notice it only shows up in the wall sheathing grouping. So it's only going to be in that drop down menu. And notice that the G rib red only shows up in the wall cladding and the exterior wainscoting. So it should only show up in those drop down menus. All right. Um, let's jump out of this real quick just to demonstrate. So let's go ahead and draw a wall. <coughs> okay, so let's look down here. And of course, I have my defaults loading, but we're going to go ahead and there's test two for our wall sheathing material. And right here, we should have G rib red, and yes, we do. Hit update. Okay, let's draw the wall. And you can see it's kind of a silly material, but good enough for now. <coughs> let's just throw a window and a door in there just for just break it up a little bit here. Okay, now <coughs> let's turn off the wall cladding just so we can see what we got. And sure enough, there's our... Okay, so basically what's happening is those custom materials are showing up in the drop down menus. Let's go ahead and edit this wall assembly just to show you again. Um, right here under the advanced options of course we've got the wall cladding material, we've got the wall sheathing material. And see you basically got the default kind of built in ones all the way down to dense glass. And then these last four are coming from the custom material library. Okay. So if we hit teal blue for instance that's coming that's one of our custom materials that we've defined let's go ahead and change this up here's another okay so basically everything from s this one these ones here are all built in all the way stucco light tan and then everything corrugated down is coming from the material library let's go ahead and put the uh, stone in there okay and you can see it didn't update well actually it did what happened is we turned off that layer Let's turn that layer back on. Okay, so we change that wall panel. So let's change this one while we're at it, just to show you how quick that is. And we'll go ahead and hit update stone. Okay. So, um, last thing I want to show you with this is, of course, you know, a lot of materials are SKM files now. You can get those from the. Uh, 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 extension or 3d warehouse so for instance I have this uh, pavilion or whatever it is from Korea that has an interesting texture so go here to materials you can of course download all the materials let's go ahead and download this interesting material here okay <coughs> okay so there it is I'm just gonna drop that on my desktop okay let's go ahead and close that out I'm going to go back to my materials tab. I'm going to hit import SKM right here. And what it does is it prompts me for an SKM file. Okay, so here's the one I actually just did right now. And this is what I renamed, but we'll just do this one right here. Okay, we hit OK. And automatically it dumps that information from that SKM right into the material manager, into the <coughs> create the material uh, dialog. So, and, and it actually takes a material name directly from this game. So, we're going to change that to just basic English here or something. Um, uh, let's go wood grain 2. Okay, and it, it grabbed, of course, that was probably a metric number. It grabbed the actual scaling and the image. And everything's pretty, we pretty much don't need to do anything else. And we'll just put it on wall cladding and hit import material. Okay, so there's our new material. It's been created. It's ready to go. We can use it. <coughs> if you go back in and edit it, you can see it's, you know, that's, it is what we created it as. So, go ahead and X out of that. Let's, um, let's go ahead and apply that material to this wall. Okay, and you'll notice that, again, it is not in this menu, or in this drop-down menu, because we made it so that it's only in the cladding go to the cladding and there it is and select it and update and there you go there's that SKM based uh, material that is now part of the material library 
So anyways, in a nutshell, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I think this feature is fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Uh, you know, I'm still going to be probably adding a little bit more uh, granularity to the thing, uh, especially when it comes to <coughs> these usage options. So we'll probably break it down into a few more categories here. Uh, but for now, we've got three. And I just added this uh, material manager to the truss plugin as well. So, and the, by the way, the truss plugin and the wall plugins material libraries are separate; they're not merged. You can easily copy uh, the text file or the information from the text file uh, from one to the other. But if you do that, you just need to make sure you bring over uh, any materials and drop them into the right subfolders as well, the actual JPEGs or the textures. So let's just show you real quick here. Uh, enter materials. You can see we've got similar materials already predefined, but it's in the truss plugin and in the wall plugin. Now the foundation plugin does not have the material uh, manager set up yet. All right. Well, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please email me, and uh, I will respond as quickly as I can. Thank you.